All right, so let's look at this next example. Um, it's on the next page. We have that homes in a nearby college town have a mean value of 8,990. It's assumed that homes in the vicinity of a college have a higher value. To test this theory, a random sample of 12 homes is chosen from the college area. Their mean valuation is $92,460, and the standard deviation is $5,200. We're going to complete a hypothesis test using alpha equals 0 0.05. Assume prices are normally distributed. All right, guys, so this is how our thought process works. We're reading through this problem. There's a ton of information, but they tell us complete a hypothesis test using alpha equals 0 0.05 level significance. So that's a key word. So when we hear that, um, we should think phantoms. To solve this, we have to follow phantoms, okay? So on an exam, you're going to have to come up with this acronym on your own. All this part right here is not going to be given to you. This is going to be blank. So you're going to have to remember what acronym to use and what each letter stands for. So let's do parameter. Um, what we're testing is we see this mean value. It's, this is definitely not a proportion. It's definitely a mean. So the parameter is mu. And our hypothesis, we need our null hypothesis, and we need an alternative. Um, we have to include the parameter. So we're going to write mu. And remember, our null hypothesis has the equal sign. And we're comparing it, the homes, to this value given. So $89,950. And um, what we're testing is we think the homes in the vicinity of the college have a higher value. So we're going to test the idea that the mu is actually bigger in college towns. All right, so there's our null and our alternative. We're going to have a right tail test. So our assumptions, um, we have three assumptions. In chapters 9 and 10, we have three assumptions. So simple random sample. And they have that. There's a random sample of 12 homes. We want to make sure that the sample size n is less than 5% of the population. And we'll just assume yes. We don't really have enough information, but we'll just assume that's true. And then the third option, do we have a large sample size? Or is it normally distributed? And they tell us that it's normally distributed. So we're going to write that the population is normal, normally distributed. One, two, three things for our assumptions. Next comes N, name that test. Let's run a T test on this. Okay, and then um, I'll give you guys, you guys can pause the video, run that T test. All right, um, your mu naught is this $89,950. Remember, it's a right tail test. You have your sample size and all that good stuff. Um, oh, and then your, um, of course, your sample statistics as well. Okay. And we're going to get from the top your test statistic. And your test statistic is 1.67. And your p value, you're also going to get your p value. And the p-value, remember it's a probability, so it always has to be between 0 and 1, 0 0.06. All right, and I need both pieces of information. If we wanted to do the classical approach, we would look at the test statistic. And the test statistic, we would have to make sure that it was not in the critical region. So using the test statistic, that's using the classical method. So we would have to go to the table of t distributions and find the critical value. What's alpha again? So we would have to find the area to the right is 0 0.05. And then how many degrees of freedom would we have? 12 minus 1 is 11. So we would match that up and we would get our critical value 1.796 so this is the cutoff point so where is 1.67 well 1.67 is in the okay zone 
Okay, so that would tell us do not reject the null. Alternatively, remember you don't have to do both classical and p-value approach, you can choose. The p-value approach is much more straightforward. All we do is take our p-value and we compare it to alpha. And alpha is 0 0.05. And is it low or is it bigger? The p-value is greater than alpha, so again, we do not reject the null. All right, so um, let's state our conclusion. So it always starts off the same. Remember, it's kind of like a template. So we would say something like we, or excuse me, I was about to do a confidence interval. Okay, so um, there is, and it's, insufficient or sufficient evidence at the alpha equals blank level of significance and then to conclude the alternative and then whatever your alternative is. So it's always the same template, right? Okay, so in this example, we do not reject the null. So if we do not reject the null, what kind of evidence do we have? Insufficient evidence. All right, and then our alpha is given to us. It was 0 0.05. And now it's time to write the alternative, to conclude the alternative. Um, and we can get this right from the problem, um, that the homes in the vicinity of the college have a higher value than the 89,950. So to conclude um, that homes in the vicinity of the college have a higher value and then we can say something like then the 89,950. All right, let's go on to our next example. Oh wait, before we do that, I actually wanted to make a comment right here. Let's go back up to the p-value. It's really close, right? P-value is pretty low, 0 0.06. What would happen if our alpha was 0.1? Well, then our p-value would be less than alpha. So now we do not reject the null. We would actually reject the null. If the p-value is low, the null must go. And so now we don't have insufficient evidence. What ev kind of evidence do we have? We have sufficient evidence. So the alpha is important, and that's why we always include it in our conclusion. Because again, if alpha was 0 0.1, we would have an entirely different statement. We would have sufficient evidence at the alpha equals 0 0.1 level of significance. So this is why we always state the alpha. Okay, guys, so let's move on to our next example. and we'll see how you guys do.